Welcome back all you current crusaders. Today we're going to pick up where we left off in our last video where we were looking at a control relay that was being controlled by a definite state switch that when we closed that switch and sent power to the control relay it changed the state of the contacts on it which made the lights change and then when we opened that switch and de-energized the coil it made the contacts go back to their normal states and the lights change back with them. And we said in this video that we were going to take at least one time and incorporate in one ladder diagram all the symbols that we've seen so far and see how that would operate. So let's do that right now. Okay, everyone, let's take a look at this ladder diagram that we have here. In this ladder diagram, we have six rungs. And in those six rungs, I have incorporated all the uh, switches, the inputs and the outputs that we have talked about so far in our previous videos. And if I turn on power to look at this ladder diagram, I can come to our definite state switch in rung one and turn this light on and off. And we just wanna remember that that switch stays where we leave it. In our second rung, I incorporated our normally open push button going to a red light. And that red light is on when I push the button. Because it's a normally open button, when I let go of it, the button goes back open and the light goes off. Coming down to the next rung, I have our normally closed push button with a light. And that light is already on because that normally closed push button is already touching the two circles, just keeping it simple. So that means that it's passing the power from this circle to the next one and is receiving its hot, it has its neutral, that light is on. If we match this normally closed push button, the light temporarily goes off as long as we're pushing the button. When we let go of the button, it comes back on because it goes back to its normal state. Coming down one more rung, I just put in a normally open push button to control our control relay. We have it to where when we, when we energize the coil on it, it will open this normally open contact, turn off this red light. At the same time, it will close this normally open contact that is on it and turn on this green light. And it will do that as long as I hold the button because I'm using a normally open push button this time. All right, so in that circuit, we have all the things that we've, we've looked at so far and they can all operate independently on each rung that they're on. Okay, next thing I wanna look at in here is inputs and outputs and how they can be wired into a circuit. In this circuit, I have incorporated several uh, field input devices and a couple of outputs that we can turn on and off. And what I'm trying to point out in this video is that the input devices they either pass power from one circle to the next or they don't until they're acted upon. Like this normally closed button is passing power right through it until I, until I mash it and then it goes back to passing power. This normally open button is not passing power until I mash it and then it passes power. So in this circuit, we have the inputs. I have one wired in series and in parallel and series parallel. And with the inputs, since they don't burn power, I can put them in any configuration that I want to. Like right here, I have the red light and the yellow light wired in parallel. And then on another rung, I have the heater. And to turn, turn these outputs on, I would have to uh, not press the e-stop, the definite state device, leave it where it is. Uh, not push the normally close, and I would have to hold down a normally open. And I could drop down to this rung and turn the, the red light and the yellow light on and off or I could come up to this rung and hold down another button and turn them on and off. So all of the inputs can be wired in series, series, parallel, however we want to wire them. But because the voltage drops, we don't put the outputs in series, we put them in parallel, or we put them on a separate rung where the heater is. And I can turn it on and off the same way. All right. Okay, everyone, that's it for that video. In the next video, we're gonna look at a bunch of different symbols and a bunch of different inputs and outputs and start incorporating them into circuits and trying to learn the symbols so we'll know what they are when we see them. And we'll do that next and I'll see you there.